thing is that kind of your main your main business right now or what's what's the uh what you doing right now yeah so i'm actually a product designer okay um, so i design like sounds apps, intense oh my gosh digital interfaces yeah it's amazing yeah okay it's really cool but yeah. i do um like you know being a pt and doing that's you right know, online physical... fitness content on the side are you is it physical therapist or personal trainer personal personal trainer, trainer. Yeah. okay okay i always that always confuses me whenever i see pt i'm like it's probably a personal trainer but i'm like maybe they're a physical therapist i don't know i know so, they're pretty much like the you know same acronym so it's it confusing exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's right so what got you into personal training was that where your education was originally with exercise or you just kind of fell into it I just was super passionate about exercise mm -hmm. and I just, you know, liked working out and I liked programming my own workouts. Yeah. Um, but I finally was just like, why not actually get formally educated and get certified so okay. that I can, you know, share my workouts with other people. I yeah. just didn't want to start like posting on Instagram or writing programs for friends if I wasn't certified. Mm. Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted to just like formalize it. Yeah. And learn a little bit more of like the, you know, biomechanics behind exercise. That was really interesting to me. So it felt like a good place to start. See, I like that because it's, it's you know, you, you could be just an average personal trainer, but it seems like you kind of figured out like where your niche was or what you wanted it to be. So you decided to go with the biomechanics aspect. And yeah, I yeah, think so. I think that's perfect because a lot of people don't know what to do with that. You know, I think anybody could get started, but when it comes down to like breaking into the finer points of the workout and the diet, you know, you need, you need more of that. So yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. That's so cool. Is, is it something is how long did it take you to like kind of build up that business? Did you have to start doing the standard stuff like social media posting or did you, how'd you go about that? Yeah. So I actually got my certification like right after the first, the first lockdown started back in like February, March, Mm -hmm. Um, and because I literally had nothing else to do besides work and <laughs> Same. study for my, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, sure. so, so I like did it in the span of like a month. I just like wow. studied and read every day and then took my test. Cause I was like, I truly have nothing else to do. So, so that's the I'm one good thing that came out of the lockdown is anybody who wanted to get like certifications or something, they could just bam, exactly. get it done, move on. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I started there and then I kind of was like, I might as well start my Instagram and really start posting on that and sharing my workouts. Did you so did you I have did the, the same time. did you have the Instagram up already or was it what did you literally just kind of just start during that first lockdown? Yeah, just started during the first lockdown wow. and started nice posting, job. you know, basically I would work out 5 or 6 days a week so I'd post 5 or 6 workouts a week um okay. just as I was doing them pretty much. But you gave a lot of free content. That's that's why that's why it latched on so well is because like, like you just, you just started right into helping people. Like you didn't even, Thanks. yeah, it just, uh, but I mean, I guess that's how anybody should go about it to start off with. You know, if people don't know who you are, you know, you start offering free crap. So yeah, all, the, all exactly. the good free, free stuff and everything. Well, man, that's amazing. It did what you do now, like the, the app design and everything. Did that kind of help you have an edge in that market with the personal training? I wonder that sometimes I was thinking about it the other day because I yeah. feel like from like a design perspective, mm -hmm. I work in a lot of the softwares already that I'm editing with. So okay. I knew like, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro and I knew how to edit videos for social and yeah. um, like little things that I feel like how to create like engaging thumbnails or um, like marketing content, just little stuff like that, that I feel like other if you're coming from like a purely exercise science background, you may not have that knowledge. I definitely feel like it helped oh, and it helped me sure. just like crank out content at a faster pace. Yeah. And, and I can see like you've, you've got the tips that people, people don't have because I know that that's, that's a big thing, especially with all the stuff that happened in 2020, you know, I'm sure that people knew, realized they needed this expertise with like the media side and, yeah, and it's kind of like like it's good for you because that maybe helps you a little bit because you're like, oh, I already know all this crap. Like I know Adobe and everything and, and producing stuff was probably your your forte, you know, as opposed to yeah. the actual exercise perspective, which, I'm you know, came along with the certification and everything. 
totally so, yeah that's amazing oh my gosh what uh what is your like what do you suggest to people you just start training like what's your first step with them do you kind of tackle the mental side or you just you start them into a new program because i know every trainer is different like i've talked to some people who will talk about like well i sit them down i try to understand their life and everything and then there's some trainers who are a little bit more like forward and they go hey you know here's your plan do this mm -hmm. and it'll work which you know i, I don't know everybody's different so, yeah 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 the former i definitely like to understand like their current routine okay. and where they're at like if they're exercising at all yeah what their exercise currently looks like yeah and then i definitely like goals if they're just trying to like build a habit yeah. and get more regular with exercise or if they actually have the goal of you know gaining a certain amount of muscle mass and yeah bur you know losing a certain amount of fat like it, it, everybody's goals so sure sort of where i start and if there's somebody that is really new to fitness and like just needs to get in a habit for me it's more about mm -hmm. creating a positive experience with working out sure so sure. i don't want to and have them be like oh my god i'm never i would rather have them only work out you know three times a week or have their sessions only be 20 or 30 minutes long so that they're building a better relationship with exercise for the long term yeah yeah and and it's one of the other things too i, I kind of do you do you run into people who kind of who are tough to push in the right direction? Because I think with me and a lot of new trainers, you know, I, I've I've struggled to understand like what that missing mental ingredient is. It's like you know, you know, you have the information, and you know yeah. that what you're about to tell them, they they probably should be doing. <laughs> but do you have do you have any troubles with like trying to get them to do that? Because that's oh for sure. Yeah, and and I'm sure every trainer does, but it's it's the approaches to that are always kind of different, you know. So yeah, yeah, I feel like it, it, and it's so funny to be a trainer and to just be have been really into fitness for mm -hmm. you know five years, six, seven years at this point. Yeah, where I'm like I I almost forget what it feels like to be starting from zero again sure so it's hard for me when people are like oh well you know i just can't like i want to work out but just my day sort of keeps getting in the way or sure, i suddenly sure. get too busy or whatever and for me it's the opposite i'm like i prioritize working out above Everything. a lot of other things because for me it's like su such a mental release that i'm like i need to do this every day and so it's i think it's tough for me to sort of empathize and be like it is let yeah, me I, it, bring yeah. myself back you know to like what it was like when i was first starting my journey and how i got myself motivated back then and then try to apply those tools to whoever i'm working with too how did your journey begin like were you were you somebody who had to kind of come a long way to really kind of adopt fitness did you have a weight loss or what's the how did you get into it yeah it's kind of a good question I had like a very kind of up and down relationship with exercise. Okay. I started running when I was like 13 because I wanted to lose weight sure. and it very quickly like stumbled into, you know, eating disorder territory, which I feel yeah. like for a lot of 14, 15 year old girls who don't understand like so much of what they're doing to their body. Mm -hmm. They just are like, okay, the more I work out and the less I eat, the skinnier mm -hmm. I will get. And mm -hmm. that is how that will go. Yeah. And I did that for a little bit, burned myself out and decided in college to run again. Okay. Once again, burned myself out because I got just really hooked on like the endorphin rush of running. Sure, sure. And did not prioritize rest or recovery well enough um, and ended up actually fracturing my hip, which was a little oh bit gosh. wild. It yeah, was just that's like, a a, little... you know, <laughs> sure. a little zero to a hundred. You're like, <laughs> oh shit, this, this is happening. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was like, I think I do need to rest. I think maybe resting is good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, you know, who knows? Something like that. But yeah. So after that, after I healed from that, I finally mm. tried weight training and more of like a functional plyometric, just like multifaceted workout approach yeah. instead of like, I'm only going to run. I was more open to other forms of exercise and realized that not only did I, I got to just have more fun because I wasn't doing the exact same thing every single day, Sure, but I could work out for less amount of time and see more results than I was seeing as a runner in terms of like, you know, muscle growth, fat loss, 
all of those things that I feel like people only start to realize when they really start lifting weights and trying other forms of training. Sure. So, and, and you're, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's funny that you mentioned that because it is, that's that's where a lot of people start too, is they start into that whole mindset of like, oh, cardio's mm-hmm. cardio's got to be the top priority, and they can't mm-hmm. have anything to do with the muscle building or the weightlifting because that thought of like bulking up is too yes is, is it's it's too it's too tough to get past. Like they can't they can't envision themselves any other way than like, oh, I'm gonna get like t- fatter per se if I do weight yeah. training, or they'll think of themselves as bigger. So exactly. Yeah. Did that, was that something that did, did you bulk up easier when you like did weight training or how did your body respond to that? Because that's, that's always, I don't know. I'm always interested to hear because some people will tell me different things, you know? So, yeah. That's a good question too. Yeah. Cause I feel like I was in the, when I was really running, mm-hmm. I was in college mm-hmm. and I was drinking probably five or six nights a week sure. and eating dominoes five or six nights a week. College stuff. But I was like, just college life. Yeah, when I was running like, you know, at eight miles a day. Sure. And when I would run my smartwatch or the treadmill or whatever I was running on would be like, you just burned 2,500 calories because I would have oh, been gosh. running for like straight up two hours. But you don't realize that your body adapts to a stimulus, obviously. Yes. So running for me at eight miles, I thought I was burning 2,500 calories. Yeah. And in reality, I was not. My body was going into like maintenance mode and I probably was burning a fifth of that yeah. because my body was so adapted to that exercise. So I thought I was as lean as I was going to get. I was Mm. like, I'm running eight miles a day. I'm burning 2,500 calories a day. There's no way I can be leaner or more defined or have more muscle definition than I do right now. Sure. And when I started weight training, it was definitely an adjustment because I was working out for less time. I was definitely burning what looked like less calories on my smartwatch. But even after a month or two, I was seeing muscle definition and leaning out in a way that I had never done while I was running. Sure. And I think also like a huge part of that was not binge drinking like five or six nights a week. But that being said, I think like changing the stimulus and just like switching things up made my body react really quickly. So I definitely put on muscle, but I feel like I lost a lot of fat yeah. and got to that point of like, you know, Interesting. body recomposition essentially, where I just looked a lot more toned at probably a similar size and weight, but it was muscle more instead toned. of fat. More toned, exactly. And I think that's that's what's lost nowadays is that you do get more toned. I mean, it looks oh, totally. it looks very appealing. It's not it's not something that that just looks like more more bulk you know it's it's definitely something that is nice to look at and it's like you can tell it's like oh this this person you know this person lives a healthy life and they have this this muscle and everything so exactly man that's that's amazing and did you you had to cut out the alcohol too i'm guessing you kind of used to <laughs> i definitely off that I, yeah toned yeah. it down a little bit by then I was like, I had graduated from college. I was working my first like corporate job Sure. and I would go to the gym after work for Mm. like an hour, go home, cook Mm. dinner. And I was only really drinking on like Friday or Saturday night and usually just like one night of the weekend. So even such a change for my body. Yeah. And I was immediately just like also healthier overall because I feel like I still know when it's not COVID times, like having a good night with friends, but Mm. I feel like when you just drink like hungover for me, like it was so hard to just like not eat terribly when I was hungover. All I wanted was like pizza or, you know, junk food. So sure. I feel like for me, the alcohol was definitely a big piece of it. Yeah. And, and, but that's the, it's sort of implementing these like small habit changes into your lifestyle, you know, instead totally. of, instead of just like pulling everything back and like totally overhauling your lifestyle, that's not sustainable. It's going to be, what you did is you still allows yourself to have the drink, have the, you know, the food and all that stuff, but you just, you just regulated it, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's a lot less daunting too when you do it that yeah, way because you're not exactly. really saying no to anything permanently or just making little, like you said, lifestyle changes. Yeah. And, and I'll ask you this too. This is, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going off course, but is there any <laughs> diets that you cannot stand? Is there any diets that you just have, you just have like an aversion to, like you don't tell people about them. You don't want them to do them. 
what you think? That's such a good question. Yeah. Well, I feel like I'm I'm very like intuitive, team intuitive eating. Okay. Um, and I've tried counting macros and I, I don't mind it. Like it's not terrible, but for mm. me and my like history with eating disorders, it can be triggering to count macros. So I try to sort of stray away from that and stick more intuitively. But, and this Isn't may be- interesting? Yeah. It's, it's so interesting, but it, it also is. like, I may kick myself in the butt for this, but I was vegan for like, <laughs> Shame. Three or four years. <laughs> it's okay. I know. And <laughs> okay. I'm all the vegans that are listening right now are like, don't do it, girl. <laughs> but for me, like my gut hated being vegan. I don't know what it was, but I would eat the vegetables and all the fruit and like the banana ice cream. And I would bloat to the point where I looked like nine months pregnant. So veganism is a diet that I'm like, if your body reacts well to it, and if you're able to have good digestion and if you're able to get enough protein in and okay. all of your vitamins and macronutrients, by all means. But I don't think I think there was a phase where being vegan was like the it thing. Like if you wanted to look thin and be healthy and, you know, look strong, you were vegan. Yeah. And, and, and I, I don't know if I support that. <laughs> and and I don't, it's, it's funny. I don't either. But the. The, the weird thing about veganism right now, and I know a bunch of people who still do veganism and they're very, yeah. they're very into it. They love it for some reason. And what they always tell me, it's never, you know, I, I guarantee you exactly what you said. They're not getting enough protein. They're probably not supplementing their life properly to maintain it. But they always say that the energy they get from it yes. is the reason why they love it so much. And, and it always, it, it's, it's confusing to me because I'm like, I, that must be some pretty amazing energy because yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. I'm like, but you're not, I don't, I don't quite get it sometimes. Was that what you felt in the beginning? Like, no, did you feel like energy? not at all? And See, it was funny there you go. I was, like, I was doing all that too. I was, if I'm vegan, my skin is going to be perfect. I'm never going to have acne. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have going to be you know a size two bikini model yeah. my life is going to be great skin broke out like crazy mm -hmm. i don't know what happened it was like probably just the extra carbs from all the fruit and the um you know rice and beans and like just all the extra carb sources you have when you're vegan sure. my skin blew up and my digestion was terrible i didn't i if anything i think i gained weight um i don't know my body just rejected it and i think like for some people, their bodies love it. Like I have a friend who's vegan and she literally looks like a goddess. Like she, her body thrives off of veganism, but I think it's just not for everybody. So I'm like, yeah. it's like a hardcore Kool-Aid drink if your body is rejecting it. So I but think it's, it's like, just, you got to listen, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and I love that you have that perspective. Cause that's, I, I mean, there you go. Like it's, I don't know if, if people do it differently when they say they feel all these wonderful things, but I yeah. feel like I would feel like you, like you would just, you'd be like, this is not, my body can't accept this. Like I exactly. like, this is not, this is not right. You know, I'm supposed to be eating meat. You're supposed to be eating lean proteins. It feels very uh, unnatural, I guess is what is what my mind kind of goes to. And yeah, for sure. I don't know. And I, I, I guess I see that with things like, like keto and like intermittent fasting. I don't know mm -hmm. it, it, what you think about those, but I, I don't, I find it strange that like you're kind of forcing your body to, yeah. to feel a certain way or it's like, no, this has to happen. I have to like cut out all carbs or cut out all my, all my animal sources of protein or something. So I yeah, don't know, just I the idea of forcing agree. yourself. Yeah. And so well, I just think it comes back to bite you. Like, I think yeah. you can do it for, you know, a certain amount of time. I, there are so many, like through, I feel like through everybody's like health journey, there's a period of, of like restriction where you're like, okay, I'm going to not have any sweets on the weekdays, but I'm allowed to have sweets on like Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And like undeniably after three or four months or six months or a year, however long it takes, your body is just like fiending for a cookie on Tuesday night. And if you just have to have one, like, but then you binge. So I'm sort of the same way about keto and intermittent fasting as you are, where I'm like, if you know, why, why cause that like unhealthy yo-yo mm -hmm. bad and good food mentality when you don't mm -hmm. need to like, unless your body explicitly needs it or you have a chronic illness or something that requires that you eat like that, like sure. why add that in 
and make your body go haywire. And we talked about, I talked about that with somebody the other day. That that was the exact reason we didn't like intermittent fasting because of the binge eating. And yeah. it was, that was like, that's what you people who, you know, people who know what they're talking about, you and all these other people like that, that's the big problem is because, you know, you don't really regulate what you're eating during that window. And then at the end of the day, you just kind of, you know, throw caution that you're just like, I'm, I'm just going to eat whatever. Like I get exactly. this, it's my window, you know? Yeah. So, I'm in the window. I'm in the window. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I, I'll eat whatever the hell I want. You know, as long as it, as it adds up to the amount of calories I was supposed to get or something, you know? Yeah. So, totally. yeah. So it's all these, it's all these fad diets, but it goes back to the idea that I, I like the intuitive eating perspective. You know, I, I, I think that that's the unsung hero of all of that is this, the idea of, I guess taking what you like already and then forming something newer around that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. But that's cool. I, I, I'm glad you were talking about veganism like that because that's my big beef too. No pun intended. But, <laughs> but, but uh, no, that's, that's really, yeah. Like people talk about the energy aspect and supplementation is, you know, a bit supposed to be kind of a key thing in veganism to keep you, you know, moving in a good nutrient direction, I guess. But do you do mm -hmm. supplements at all? Are you a big like go to the go to GNC and I need you to get whey protein <laughs> or what you think about it's, that? I go back and forth because although okay. I intuitively eat, like I do struggle to get enough protein during the day. Yes. Just because I, I don't know. I just feel like out of all of the foods that I crave, protein is usually the I tend to crave carbs and fats more. Sure. Um and so I tend to, I do use protein powders. Okay. Um, and I feel like I kind of, I'll mix those into like smoothies. I'm not really like a classic protein shake gal where it's just like water and powder. I tend to put it into like a bigger smoothie or yeah. I don't know, bake with it or like do something different with it. Um, and then sometimes I mess around with BCAAs because okay. mostly I just like how they make me drink more water because they taste good. So I'm like, I don't even really drink them during my workout. If I'm just like, really yeah. struggling to drink water that day. I'll just have BCAAs and it helps me drink my water. I like, um, I like your interpretation of BCAAs then because that's, that's the, that's the other thing too. Like, like people, I, I don't, I'm like you, you know, other than, other than maybe helping you drink more water, what do BCAAs yeah. really actually do? Exactly. You know, they don't, exactly. it's just fancy packaging, but I love I love the fact that you do it to drink more water. That's what I, that's what I'll start telling people now. Yeah. Like I had this interview. She said she does it to drink more water. <laughs> do that. Yeah. It's true. And I feel the same way. I feel like there's a lot of really good marketing in the yeah. supplement space. And that's for sure at the end of the day, I'm like, you really don't need, unless you are like, you know, deficient in mm. some sort of micronutrient mm. and you need to take iron or B12, which I kind sure. of, almost categorize as like a separate type of supplementation where you're actually having like individual, you know, vitamins and minerals. Yeah. But on like a sports supplement or like a sports nutrition like vein, I don't really feel like any of it's necessary. It's more just it's, if it it's... helps you drink water, if it helps you get in your protein for the day, yeah. sure. But I don't feel like you need to be waking up and having like your greens <laughs> and then your BCAAs your and then your pre-workout <laughs> and then your protein. And yeah. you're just like, it, oh yeah. It also, it's just so like, it kind of makes fitness like a very, um, tedious. It's like, it's, yeah. it's tedious. And from like a financial perspective, a lot of people just can't afford to go and spend yeah. $200 on supplements every yeah. two weeks or whatever. So t it kind of makes fitness less accessible for people that are like, oh, I can't. I can't do that. Yeah. And you don't have to like, if you want to, sure. If it's fun and you like the taste of the stuff, like go for it, but it's not mandatory. Sure. It's for the, it's for the teenage boy. Who's like, he's got a, <laughs> he's got a check that he got from his first job. And he's like, I'm going to go buy supplements. I'm going to get <laughs> yeah. big. Yeah. So that's, that's what, that's what that's reserved for right there. But yeah. I mean, to your point, I, I like that you kind of categorize those supplements. Like you categorize the, the B12, and these kind of individual vitamins, you know, where you could take a multivitamin, but you know, you, you gotta, you gotta recognize what, what the importance of that is in your day, as opposed to just going to a supplement store and buying a fat burner or something that really won't work, you know? So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which, 
which I, I it was always funny. Fat burners were a huge thing. Like, oh, have, yeah. you, have you ever have you had any experience with fat burners? I've never taken them, Good. but there was definitely like a phase. I want to yeah. say I was in high school, early college, where it was like, especially like the pills, like the, I don't even know if they were fat burning pills or like water. They're probably just a diuretic, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That people were taking to like lose water weight. And they don't I was even luckily work. Luckily, never. Uh, no, not yeah, at all. I've, I've taken, I tried like an herbal diuretic water loss pill and, um, and it was so funny. You really don't feel any different. You're just, yeah. you're like, all right, I'm going to be in the bathroom like five yeah. hours today because I'm on this pill. But literally, you're you're not. Yeah, it's so funny. You're just you're just taking the pills like nothing's happening. You know, so yeah, like waiting for the results. Waiting for the results. Yeah, when's my body going to be ripped? So <laughs> yeah, when am I going to be shredded? Well, that that's that's amazing. But then it, you know, it's it's cool because then your your plan is all revolving around the idea of clean eating and just. Just being real with yourself and your diet and that kind of thing, the sustainability aspect. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. What do you do in the gym right now for yourself? Like what's your current split? What what do you oh, do? Such a good question. I am yeah. on month, I don't even know what month it is. I think it's month nine, maybe month ten of home workouts. Um oh. because when I was in Connecticut, I was living with my parents and my yeah. fiance's parents yeah, and yeah. my dad is really high risk mm. for covid so i okay. just didn't want to like expose him in any way by going to the gym and um i bought what did i get i have two 30 pound kettlebells nice. and i have two adjustable dumbbells that can be anywhere from like 2.5 pounds to like uh -huh. 25 pounds i've seen um, those those are cool yeah I know yeah exactly what they're a good about. investment like i think like mine were like 40 bucks on ebay and i've put <laughs> awesome. them to use which is great so i'm kind of with that i feel like i do a lot more full body work in all honesty just because it's harder for me to dedicate like a full day to a specific muscle group just because I don't have the same level of equipment that I would if I was at a gym. Yeah. So I find myself doing more full body work, but I'll split it up into like a full body pull and then uh -huh. a full body push and then more of like a plyometrics agility day. Yeah. That's a lot more just like <clears throat> body weight, but plyo and agility focused. Um, but when I'm in a gym, I tend to train a lot more functionally. So I, I, nice. I p don't really lift crazy heavy. Mm -hmm. I focus more on like functional movements mm -hmm. and adding in like a lot of muscle endurance and power work. That's okay. probably like my favorite way to train. So when we're back in San Francisco and I have access to a gym, I feel like getting back into that like functional split will be really fun. Sure. Are gyms open in San Francisco? Or is that it kinda, is a great is, question. Yeah, I still, think it varies, okay. but it's also warm enough there that they can do outdoor gyms, which is nice. like fascinating. I've never been to one of those, so yeah. I'm excited to try that out. But I'm from we'll uh, I'm from uh, Long Beach originally. Oh, nice. So, yeah, yeah. That's where that's where I'm from, and and I, we I'm in Louisiana right now, so we came here a while back. But yeah, so that's man, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll so, see. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's I. I I like your split right now, even though you're, you're, you're doing the home workouts and everything. I think what you're talking about, that can, that needs to be done in the gym for a lot of people who need to lose weight. If, if yeah. I think, I think that's, that's a, a kind of an un, uncommon one that I've heard of because, you know, my mind goes to like a very bro splitty kind of like, okay, yeah. Monday chest day, you know, Tuesday back day. <laughs> and so for somebody needing to lose weight and implement a, a more fun version of cardio and something that's not going to last yes. 30 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour on the treadmill. That's, that's a beautiful way to incorporate it, you know? So I totally agree. Yeah. I feel like it's a really good way to get your cardio. And, yeah. and I think like for, I don't know, I feel like for, for me, this is so silly, but I really struggle counting reps. I don't know I do why. Too. I do too. I, I'll agree with that. <laughs> I get yeah. It. Like if I'm listening to my music and I'm like really so, jamming out, I literally forget what rep I'm on. Yeah. And then I just am like, okay, I could be on rep five. I could be on rep 12. I really don't know anymore. Yeah. What do I stop? Do I keep going? Like, so I just start to use timers a lot more too. And I will just set, you know, it's easy to That's increase great. like your, you know, intensity by just making your timer a little bit longer or adding weight or like it. super setting a hypertrophy movement with a power movement in the timer, the span of the timer. And for people like me that just want to jam out and yeah. work out from home, it's a good way to like not have to 
yeah i don't know to work around like the the push pull split or like the classic hypertrophy style like horizontal load that you would be doing if you had like a full gym and if you were kind of doing more traditional workouts sure sure it, it's it's you know and did it you do a lot of like on online training like zoom training with people <clears throat> I actually I have not tried that yet and I've been thinking about trying it but I do like mostly how I like work with people is I write custom programs and that's Um, I I think that that's the way to go right now because I I I do really think that sort of this arm's length thing you know you you write them a very personalized program but it is it is it's tough to do the zoom stuff and then it really is yeah and then if you don't have particularly like the right client i mean they could come back and blame you like they could really come back and be like hey you told me to do this it didn't i didn't burn 70 pounds in a month i don't know so yeah and and it's it's just i kind of like the idea that you know with the programs you can accept all kinds of different people and you don't have to worry about this this backlash you know totally and for people that are like new to training and I mean, I think of like it, when I first was working out, I honestly would be really intimidated to work with a personal trainer. I yeah. think like if I was yeah. to go to a gym and have like three sessions a week with a personal trainer, I feel like I'd be really intimidated. But to have a program that yeah. I could do sort of like on my own time and if I miss one workout mm-hmm. or, you know, supplement in like an active rest day instead of a workout, mm-hmm. it's not the end of the world. I'm not like. I don't, I don't know. I feel like it takes the stress off of people that are new to training or just haven't trained in a while. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, that's perfect. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's what people want nowadays as well. That's, that's yeah. all they're looking for. So, but yeah, you could do, I, you know, the zoom workouts and everything. That's kind of, I know some people have been doing that and I just think it would be tough to like find a place to position your camera. You'd be like, okay, yeah. hold on you guys. I'm going <laughs> to move it over here and you guys are going to watch me do this. You know, so, it's so true. Like know. if you're doing a full, you know, think about all the movements you'd be doing in a I workout know. and I, some of them you're <laughs> lying on the ground and some of them you're standing up. Yeah. Some of them like you're yeah. just moving around. I'm so like, much. how do they, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's baffling to me. I'm like, I applaud you if you could do it, but I'd be, I'd be struggling. <laughs> too much to be like guys let's end this because i'm giving up right now I'm like, yeah because i'm move. frustrated i'm frustrated <laughs> go home do it yourself yeah so. yeah <laughs> exactly my god what's your favorite exercise in the gym out of curiosity oh, what do you love good doing? question mm-hmm. i love like i love i have not used a ski erg in a really long time oh, which the, is like uh, a classic crossfit like exercise i know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about. they look like an upright rower essentially yes. and you pull the two handles down and you like ski with it but it gets your lats your glutes your quads it's literally a full body movement and it's uh-huh. so good for cardio so i feel like that's one of my favorite machines but then in terms of lifts i mm-hmm. i just love like deadlifts i'm a classic deadlift gal yeah um and being able to do like a proper deadlift with a barbell I miss a lot. I really do miss that. (laughs) Is that something you often implement into a lot of programs you make? Do you put the deadlifts in there? Because I've, I never, you know, what you realize like the more research you do and everything deadlifts can be applied to literally anybody. Like it's amazing. You you could put an elderly person on like an easy, a simplified deadlift. Like totally. uh, So that realization for me was amazing because it's like, no, deadlifts can be done by anybody. Like it's so for sure. Cool. I know. And I feel like they're like, I don't know. I feel like the amount of people with lower back issues, I do get worried about programming squats more than I worry about programming deadlifts because the amount of people that just have like an anterior pelvic tilt and their butt is winking and they have no idea or like little things that can happen with squats that can really screw up your back. I feel a little bit more comfortable programming a deadlift because you're right. There's just a little bit more. You can like modify a deadlift. You can. You can. So well and so easily. And to just lighten the load and get your form down. Is, yeah. I feel like easier with the deadlift sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like they do a really good job of teaching you proper mechanics for a lot of other exercises. Okay. So I definitely love adding them in for people. That's when you see the video, you'll see me like, like, you know, rah rah <laughs> you on when you said that. Cause I was like, hell yeah, freaking do your deadlifts people. Don't freaking squat. No, that's, that's like, that is a rule of thumb that, that people need to embrace because nobody, Nobody thinks about that. Dead, the, I think the deadlift, 
Um, I don't know. The deadlift looks more intimidating, but in reality, it's it's like what you said. It is for people who have lower back issues, and you know, in physical therapy and stuff, they'll often give them deadlift ish things to do to help yeah. out with lower back pain. And and so I I think it's got it's got a therapeutic aspect to it as well. So totally, I, I, yeah, I'm I'm wholly. I'm wholly a supporter of the deadlift of the squat for, for anybody. So they, I agree. Yeah, when you watch that video, you'll see me like freaking out a little bit. Like, yes, yes, nailed it. Oh, yeah. So, so cool. Dope. Um, but uh, shoot, what was I going to ask you? The deadlift. And then I was going to talk about I tried the skier you were talking about. I wanted mm-hmm. to tell you about that because I, I don't know how, why it's so addicting, but I did just start that you know, maybe like a month ago, I picked it up over at one of our gyms and just yeah. started doing it. And I was like, this looks interesting. It's like an upright rower thingy. So yeah. And, and it's, it is, it gives you like for, for any bro dude out there who wants like a massive pump or something yes. like go freaking do the skier thing. Like totally. Uh, or do it for your cardio. Like yes. don't get on the Stairmaster for an hour, do yes. like six rounds of, I don't know, 40 seconds on 20 seconds off on the ski erg. Yeah. And if you're like hauling ass, you'll feel it. Yeah. So and, I, it's just much more efficient to me. <laughs> and it feels good too. Like you feel, I don't know. It's just a different cardio sensation. Like it's not, yeah. it, it's almost like you can go a lot longer at a quicker pace with that thing. Like if you're burning yourself out, you can kind of keep it going a little bit, you know, it's not, yeah, you totally. don't feel as, as just just like exhausted and like oh I can't keep going you know yeah so it's true I don't know maybe I don't push as hard as you do maybe I'm just like dogging it when I do it so I don't know. no you definitely do and <laughs> I feel like I I sometimes will like work it in with a strength movement mm. and I'll do like that and then with a goblet squat to like superset it or something to just sort of confuse my body. But That's I feel good. like stuff like that is a much more fun to me form of cardio. I feel like these days my steady state cardio is just, I haven't done her in almost a year. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I don't know if I'll go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's so true. And I think, I think it's gotta be, it's gotta be varied. You gotta add some, some new stuff into it. And yeah. yeah. Do you have a pet peeve when you go to the gym? Because I always like, like something people do that just annoys the crap out of you. Oh, that's such a good question. I can always cut Uh, this out of the podcast too, if you don't want to. No, I feel like (laughs) it's, it's, I feel like I've had mix a mix of like a very like athletic gym, if that makes sense, where there was like a full, like Olympic weightlifting room and like turf and like sleds. And just, it was like, more of a people that were training there were like hardcore hardcore and then i've gone to like a ymca vibe where it's like a (laughs) lot of people that are 80 years old and and i like both genuinely because i'm like the the equipment at like an olympic gym is sick but then chilling with the 80 year olds that aren't gonna like stare at your butt while you squat i like that yeah i really like that they they do their thing so i feel like my biggest pet peeve is probably people that either a hog equipment I, I and just sort of like when they're resting, they just stand next to or like still <laughs> sit on exactly what they're using. And I'm like, OK, can I yeah. have a turn or <laughs> no, and then they just, say no or they have a problem yeah, with like, you no, asking no. like, like, hey, can <laughs> like, I work sorry. in with you? Well, I just have one more set. Like, well, yeah, okay. I'm like, OK, well, can I do yeah. my set in the meantime? But... Yeah, while you're waiting there doing nothing.